four shows in one week. Worst idea ever. It really wasn't the worst idea. It was a lot of fun. There was a lot of good things in it. But those get forgotten. One of our first ploys, and we did it deliberately, was to really oversaturate people with what Anarchy Championship Wrestling was. And that meant we forced a lot of shows down their throat. That was hectic. That was stressful. It was... I, w I wouldn't necessarily say it was difficult. It was just a lot of stress, a lot of uh, burning the candle at both ends. At that time, nobody was really... Nobody was doing the territory thing. We were in Gidding, Seguin, San Antonio. Um, we were all over the place. I know in the big time that they... But they have the manpower to do that kind of thing. They have, they have, you know, 75, 80 guys going into a building to set up the ring. They've got six or seven rings that they travel with and, or whatever. So it's, it's not a big deal for them. But on us indie guys, we got one ring. We've got seven guys to set up, tear down, plus work the show. The place that we're coming to right now is where they run their shows. Is where they run their shows. Oh, I was going to show you where they have their ring. Here's their show. Here's their show. That's their show. See that ring right there? They do their damn show in the outside, back of a bar that you couldn't fit maybe 45 people here. And they're trying to be ACW. They want to be us, they want to be like us, but they ain't close to being shit like us. There is a difference, contrary to what people say, between being a promotion and being wannabes. We just proved that. So behind the scenes, I tend to become, instead of just Jacob Ladder, I tend to become more old me when I used to serve in the military and I break up that drill sergeant voice. If it doesn't take all of y'all, a couple guys get the ropes and toss them up here so we can start getting them hooked. I'm in a good mood today. You know what I feel like doing? <laughs> the setup, tear down, setup, tear down, do show, do show, train. Because at at the at that time, uh, we would also as soon as we set up the ring and set up the building, we got in the ring and trained for like an hour and a half, two hours. Watch out! Get Old ass coming through. Ladder as a trainer is a very patient and understanding person. He's such a good teacher. With and he works so well with these kids because a lot of them that's you know that's a lot of their first matches is with is with ladder in the ring. Nineteen, and then, 20, uh, 21, 21, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, He can tell when you're hurt and when you're not. If you're BSing him and you just don't want to do it or whatever, he demands a lot out of his students. But that's just because that's him. He demands a lot out of himself. Um, he demands a lot out of life. And just roll. The thing is, push up. There, Try not to use your hands to push up. Loose is probably, I don't know, 19, somewhere 19 to 21. Looks 12. Training, it, it has been excellent. I'm out on a shoulder injury. Shit happens, but I'll be back going harder and faster than ever. Just going into it because. Just taking a bump, stepping foot in the ring. You can't even describe what it really is. What it means to me, I can't describe it. Good kid. Lots and lots of heart. Biggest problem with Lucy is kind of puny. In wrestling, unfortunately, size matters. Size will always matter. That's just the way it is. The problem is sometimes everything he's got has got him walking out of the ring with his knee out of socket, his shoulder out of socket, his head hurting. He's injury prone. Boom! Over. Oh shit! Man, boom! Now I can pop to a corner. My dream was to become a professional wrestler, and I always was a very small person, and I had people you know, telling me that I'm too small 
and that I would never make it in this business. So I went on a quest to prove everybody wrong, to prove that I was big enough and I had the heart enough to get in the ring and actually make my dream come true. Go. I got the young kids that think they got to do every move they know for the the pop to get the crowd to think they're the guy. People call it wrestling. It's wrestling still. You know? Just because you got a headlock or a setback, it's not a rest spot. It's right. working. Right. Probably one of my biggest uh, mentors. Uh, since I've been a wrestler is Jacob Ladder. You know, I, I remember when I first uh, came into ACW and, you know, there was some stuff I didn't really know about uh, psychology-wise, selling-wise, move-wise, and, you know, D uh, Ladder uh, was right there to pick up the slack for me. He helped me out a lot, tremendously, and um, he also became one of my, probably one of my closest friends in the business, inside and outside of the ring, so, you know, I definitely owe a lot to Ladder. What's that? Hold on. Let me get my dick out of your mouth so I can hear what you're saying. What was that? Oh, 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 a relative, uh, oh, whatever, you're just another guy that's trying to be a badass to, dude, you are a badass. Say, how much you pay for her? Shit, look at that. How much you pay for you? Excuse me? Here, right here. Give it to me. Hey, if you bitches like you, that's sick. The dangers of being a ref are you got to always keep your eye on the crowd. You never know if they're going to throw something in. You never know if they're going to try to run in. You never know if they're going to try something stupid. Um, when you're out there, you got to make sure like you don't step on the wrestler's ankles. You know, you're not getting in their way. You know, you see something, you accidentally get hit literally accidentally get hit, you got to make it believable too. So you just kind of got to stay out of the way unless you know some shit that's coming up. The boys, we step up and we know we got to put on a better show because these fans just gave us their money, you know. It may, it, might have, it may have taken them two hours to make the money for that one ticket. So the least we can do is just, you know, give them something to go home and talk about and give them their money's worth. Indie wrestling is all about the fans that come out and support us, you know. The wrestlers, we put in the work. We bust our asses, but I mean the fans, the fans make us, you know. This is the art of hardcore wrestling. Yeah. Making the way to slice your own fucking head off like an idiot. Bam! From the bell, from the opening bell, it was like, you know, it was just an electricity and something I had never felt before so you know I was really happy to be a part of Anarchy Championship Wrestling and you know I mean I, I knew from the very first phone call I got from Jacob Ladder to come over to Anarchy Championship Wrestling that this was going to be huge. Oh! Oh my God! I basically become like this guy who's known for fire and for doing really stupid shit. So, I wanted to do the first ever flaming table in South Texas. And we couldn't get the bottle of lighter fluid open, so somebody stabbed it, sprayed down this table. And, dude, it was like the whole bottle was on the table. We lit it. I did a implant DDT-type gimmick off the top rope through the flaming table. And Ricky Rhodes caught on fire. And instead of stopping, dropping, and rolling like everybody knows to do, 
Well, he got one of them right because he stopped. So Ricky Rhodes is laying on the outside of the ring. He, like, flies out of the ring. He's laying there on fire. And, like, he doesn't even try to put it out. He just expects everyone else to put him out. Which they do. He was fine. He wasn't hurt. Oh, Let's hear it for Ricky Rhodes. My mom came running back here, <laughs> crying. Are you okay? Mom, I'm fine. <laughs> and then the fire extinguishers that we had for Ricky to put him out just in case didn't work. Because these dumbasses went out and let's go test them to see if they work. When they're one shot fire extinguishers, you can use them one time. And they took them outside and tested them. So, of course, they don't work. You alright, Ricky? Yeah, I'm good, baby. Come here. Come here. I'm good. It's good. It's good, baby. I'm good. Ricky will do anything I tell him to do, and I give him all the credit in the world for it. But Ricky needs to figure out who Ricky is if he's going to make it in this business. Let me see. A little burn there. A little burn there. You'll be all right. Nothing bad. You're good. One thing to get real, real. You just died. You were nothing. You were sitting on the top rope when he was setting up the finish. You were, you were sitting there literally in your stool. Yeah, I know I wasn't settling. No, no. I don't care. No. I was not gonna you were that. literally sitting here. Dan hit you something, walked away, and you were sitting there like this, just wait. Yeah. Seriously, like this. He didn't fight back at all. You know? Fuck. And then he came with the chair and you just... Yeah, you did. You were scared. You were scared. Once did I jump there? Yeah, you were just scared. You were just scared. I can tell you were scared the whole time. Like, oh shit, Ricky's on fire. Um, oh shit, we put too much lighter fluid on the table. Oh shit, the table didn't break. Oh shit, the ring's on fire. Oh shit, Darren's on fire. Which part? Yeah. Oh, oh fuck, the fire extinguisher's not working. These dumb fucks don't know what they're doing. Because I truly am a, a fan of fire. It's actually a sign of being a serial killer, I believe. Liking to set things on fire. But I never killed small animals as a kid. And Ricky Rhodes is no small animal, so that doesn't really count. It was funny. At the, at the time, it wasn't funny. Now that I look at it, it was funny as hell. Because Ricky got into the back. He's like, his arms all charred up and burned. And it's like, you idiot. I can see your back, dude. Oh, I'm, I'm good. I just... Yeah, it's just hot. It actually added to the show, though, man. If you want, you can get Jimmy over your pan. Yeah. Can you, um, can you wet that and get on my yeah, back? Dude. Take it's yeah. all for a cause, baby. It's all for a cause. It's not that bad, is yeah, it? No. I just, I landed on the chair. Yeah. And How did it look, though? Dude, we were pissed because the fucking bottle was yeah. open. Okay, thank you. Good match, big man. It's another day in the life of Anarchy Championship Wrestling. He tried to play it off like it was no big deal, but I think it actually freaked him out a lot. Because he thought it was worse than what it was. Wow, you're lucky to get the tattoo. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I just, I remember Ladder running up. Yeah. You know, forget about him, my ring's on fire, my ring's on fire. I, I thought that was funny as hell. My, my boy Ricky there, he's our young boy. He got welcomed to the hardcore world by one of the top guys in the hardcore business. I give him credit. He stuck it out. He toughed it out. He's got a couple burns. He'll live. I've been through the fire. He'll probably want to do it again because he's a dumbass and I'm training him. But uh, I'm proud of it again. You know, he did good. It's, it's just one of those moments that just gave that atmosphere of, uh, you know, anything can happen. You know, sit tight. Get your popcorn ready. Get a cold beer, because God knows what, what the hell those crazy SOBs are going to do, you know? I have never seen anybody burn for that long with, without, without uh, going to a hospital. That was, that was wild, you know? And uh, I think the crowd really got into that one. We go to Seguin next week, another uh, rockin' Thursday night, where we... Uh, Hopefully pack 700 people into this uh, building. It'll actually be like 80. It is what it is. Show two. Four more to go.
We're at it again in two days. Double shot this weekend, double shot next weekend. I'm losing money left and right, trying to make sure that these guys are all at the airport, all getting to shows, all getting from city to city in cars, coordinating how to fit uh, 35 guys into five cars for these shows. Not an easy task. As a fan, you want to see as many as you can, but as fast as ACW is putting on shows and the quality they're putting on shows, you don't want to miss, but start taking this photo as a fan. I mean, you had to go 30 miles this way, next week, the other way. I mean, it got to the point where it's like, okay, I got this much gas money. I have to plan my shows around ACW or plan my week around ACW. <laughs> That's a little sore, but you know what? In this business, you just wrap it up, suck it up, and go on to the next fight. Yeah! He deserves that hit for a haircut he's got. I'm telling you, Mama would not approve. Speaking of haircuts, what the hell is that? Somebody get me a weed eater. I was dead set on catching every show I could, so... I made, I think I made it each one of those shows. I think I actually took some crap from some of the other promoters. Hey, uh, come on, Ricky. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I can just imagine wrestling all those nights, four nights in one week, and just driving around. Just, just the driving alone took such a toll on you. And the more shows I would come to, the bigger the stars, the better quality. And quite frankly, I got spoiled. I started going to other wrestling shows and was like comparing it to what I had here. And then there was no comparison. So, you know, start fading out the weaker shows and just became ACW. And then that's when I said, hey, this is what I want to be a part of. I want to be a part of a company that's actually going somewhere. At the time, there was different companies going on. And ACW was just the, seemed to be the most prominent one. And... And made the right choice. And uh, Darren offered me to kind of come into ACW and, and do some of that stuff for him. So um, that's how I started uh, being uh, a part of the show, was uh, filming the backstage vignettes, filming the promos. There was big match after big match, because ACW doesn't have anything but big matches. But regardless, we're out there working our butts off from day one. So we go to Seguin. Another night we can't take off. Huge matchup. Masada, a talent from Japan that's uh, known very well. He's facing Biohazard Jacobs Pliskin. Another huge match. You all pledge yourself to me as this son of a bitch. Oh! Everybody has this mindset, the strong style of wrestling is you go out there and you beat the fuck out of each other, the Japanese style, and it's like, it's part of that, but it's not like I'm going to full force go out there and try to kill you, you know what I mean? But it is there, it is snug, and that's another reason why uh, strong style wrestling isn't as popular as it was fucking when Ring of Honor first started. such as the top dog is Anarchy Championship Wrestling, accidents happen. Why? Because we want to get up there and we're going to take more risks and do a lot more dangerous things. Get back in the ring. Let's go. Oh. Of course, sacrifices had to be made, but hey, I was there front row each time cheering them on, and I can, say, I can happily say I never miss a show.
it was so inspiring. I mean, who would have thought that that was going to be, that drove me, that pushed me over the edge, so much full excitement that the next show I went to, I just had to become a wrestler after that. Next time on Squared Circle Dreams. What really happened was, is I was scared shitless and fighting from over he was gonna kill me. If we're gonna go out, we're gonna go out with a huge bang! So, I mean, this is how it went down.